In this video, we'll do a proof involving invertible matrices. In particular, we're going to prove the following theorem. If A and B are n by n matrices, that is, square matrices of the same size, and the matrices B and A times B are both invertible, then the matrix A is invertible. In other words, a possesses an inverse. So here's our strategy. Part 1, we write down what is given. Specifically, we're given that A and B are square matrices of the same size. Call them n by n matrices. 2, B is invertible. And 3, a times B is invertible. Part 2. Write down what must be proven. Specifically, we need to prove that A is invertible. And Part 3. Devise a strategy that uses what is given and ends with what must be proven. Specifically, we'll show that A has an inverse. In other words, there's a matrix C that satisfies the following. A times C is equal to C times A equals the identity. So here's the idea behind this proof. If we knew that A inverse existed, we could write A times B inverse as B inverse times A inverse. Now we multiply both sides of the equation by B on the left to formally solve for A inverse we get A inverse equals B times the product AB inverse. Now the left side of this equation doesn't yet make sense because we can't just assume that A inverse exists, but the right side of the equation does make sense under the hypotheses of the theorem. So the right side, we're going to call that matrix C. That is, C is equal to B times the inverse of A times B. This is our likely candidate for the inverse of A. As a warm-up, here's a good exercise to try on your own. Let's C equal the matrix we just wrote down above and show that A times C is equal to the identity. In other words, C is a right inverse for A. Put this on pause and we'll check answers when we do the proof. So here's the proof. Assume that A and B are n by n matrices and that B inverse and the inverse of the product A times B exist. To show that A is invertible, we must prove that there exists a matrix C such that A times C equals C times A equals the identity matrix. So again, as above, we let C equal B times AB quantity inverse. Let's compute A times C. That's equal to A times, using the definition of C, this is B times the inverse of A times B. Let's now apply the associative property of matrix multiplication and regroup this product as AB times the inverse of the product of AB. Well, this is just the identity matrix. Therefore, we've proven that AC is equal to I. What remains to be shown is that C times A also equals the identity matrix. So note that C times A equals, using the definition of C, B times the inverse of AB. That's C times A. But there's no obvious way right now to collapse this product as we did above. So let's rewrite A in order to cancel this factor of AB inverse as follows. A equals A times the identity which is equal to A times B times its inverse. And by regrouping, this is A, B times B inverse, again, by the associative property of matrix multiplication. So it's just a fancy way of writing A. Now, why do we rewrite A this way? 
we can now write c times a as, well this is c, b times the inverse of ab, times a, which is b times the inverse of ab, times the expression we derived for a above, which is a times b, times b inverse, and now using the associative property of matrix multiplication, group the two middle factors together, that's AB inverse times AB. Multiplying the two middle factors, we obtain the identity. So we have B times the identity times B inverse, which just equals B times B inverse, which equals the identity. So in summary, we have shown that A times C equals C times A equals the identity matrix. This is precisely what it means for A to be invertible. In fact, in the process of this argument, we even derived an explicit formula for A inverse involving matrices that were assumed to exist in the statement of the theorem. We have thus completed what we set out to prove, in other words, QED.